Hey, and welcome to the Solid Verbal. Now would be a perfect time to consider subscribing. Yeah, that little subscribe button for year-round premium college football content. That's it. Here's the video. Enjoy. Subscribe. Let's start with the Michigan Wolverines, Dan. Let's. Yes. Yes, lock of the year of the year of the year of the year. Of the year. <laughs> a little bit scared though. Yeah, um, twenty to seven, driving deep red zone. Yeah, I know, I know. Twenty-seven to fourteen was the final score. Michigan did win in cover on the road. Mm-hmm. I thought for the most part Michigan played calm, under control. This game was never really in doubt. The cover was in doubt. The cover, I was yeah, sweating buddy. bullets, <laughs> sweating bullets. Naturally, Iowa's got fourth and very short. I don't know if it was fourth and goal towards the latter part of the game um, and they throw short of the chains, oh, gave it back to OPI. Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Gave it back to Michigan. And that was pretty much, pretty much the ball game. I had two main takeaways from this and both I think are kind of related to what we said when we previewed this game. Okay. The first area of concern coming into this one was how is JJ McCarthy going to react to a big road tilt in Iowa city? Tough place to play, good defense against Iowa. Yeah. I thought he seemed relatively unfazed. They didn't ask him to do a whole lot. They didn't ask him to do a whole lot. It wasn't like he was bombing it downfield every play. There were a couple shots they took deep. Most of that was, I think, a product of the run game with Blake Corum being really strong. They were able to do some some concepts off of that rushing attack that opened up opportunities for him down the field. But by and large, Blake Cor or excuse me, by and large, J.J. McCarthy was not put in a position where he had to win this game single-handedly because the rushing attack was working as well as it did. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if it was being put in a position. It was he made smart decisions about not throwing into the teeth of the no. Iowa defense that he sort of kept things in front of him, which, look, the, the biggest number in this game is the zero under the interceptions column next to J.J. That's McCarthy's right. name. That's right. That's the biggest deal here. Now, the fumble issues... We can talk about it a little bit. We can talk because, about we'll, we'll get to that. But I yeah. think just from a J.J. McCarthy standpoint, especially after we saw him last week and we talked mm -hmm. about him doing some of the Tecmo Super Bowl thing where he runs backwards until he can either make a play or somebody gets open. Sure. We didn't, we didn't see any of that, which no. was which was really good. Not a lot of explosion from Michigan, but they, they didn't have to. They they did a really no. good job staying within themselves, not overextending themselves and 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 you know, minimizing risk. So no, and it was, it was a big deal that they came out with the scripted plays or whatever on their first drive and got into the end zone, because think about how long and ugly that day is. If Iowa gets a stop right out of the gate, Oh because yeah. Iowa did a, a really good job of keeping Michigan's pretty dynamic offense in front of them, making plays, you know, keeping it to Jake Moody instead of an end zone visit kind of thing. And so I, if I'll make this about me now, um, if I could go back and make this pick all over again, I wouldn't change a thing because situationally, even with the unserious disaster that is Iowa football on offense, <laughs> it is an unserious disaster. And yeah. I, I, I hope that Paul Christ and Kirk Ferentz meet in a diner like a la Heat, the movie, the brilliant <laughs> Michael Mann movie Heat once a year and just be like, we're not changing anything. Hell no. And just like are commiserating as like these old offensive dum dum goons every year because that's what I mean. We can get to that game in a little while, but no, it's it's an. There were opportunities for Iowa for sure that Spencer Petras, who like good for Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson for sort of dancing around what everybody could see. They're like, he's got a nice arm, but that arm does not lead to completed open throws all the time. Almost never to wide receivers. And the number of times where uh, Sam Laporta double teamed and just Petrus tries to dump it down. Uh, nope, that doesn't work either. Like, it's tough. It's t It has to be near impossible to call an Iowa game and not be mean about the <laughs> Iowa offense. To, to use an extended vocabulary that keeps you diplomatic. Because oh, yeah. It's so, it's, it has to require such mental, mental and uh, spoken word gymnastics. Yeah. To not just be cruel about it. So much of what Iowa is doing on offense is based on the run. And when they can't run, as they did yeah. in this game, it's really a lost cause, especially for Spencer Petras, who is not going to light anybody up going down the field. Now, in fairness, we did see the offense on Iowa's side come to life a little bit late in the game, but they were down 20. Yeah. But before that, it was a lot of the frustrating stuff, right? The missed sure. throws that you referenced from Spencer Petras. 
the the offensive line is is not good at opening holes for the rushing attack. You mix in some of the penalties along the line, some of the mistakes, and, and they didn't have any shot here. So it is definitely a mix of personnel with shooting themselves in the foot with mm-hmm. scheme. It's really bad on a number of different levels. And I don't know how you fix that. You know, I mean, it's very simplistic to say, well, Kirk Ferentz is a dumb dumb, and Brian Ferentz is a dumb dumb, and get right. the old guard out. I mean, we've both said that. I'll say it again. I, I believe yeah. that that would help, but I don't think it's as easy as doing just a few quick firings in order to fix this thing. No. It's kind of like a systemic deal at this point that would take a while to cycle through the program one way or the other. Should point out Michigan's good. <laughs> Michigan's a really good team. We think, maybe not excellent, but really good. That has a lot of promise on both sides of the ball and swarmed the Iowa offensive line. But on the other hand, if Iowa doesn't really have an impressive offensive line, what is it that you would say you do here, Kirk Ferentz, right? <laughs> what is it, if the offensive line is disappointing and gets overwhelmed by a good defensive line pretty consistently over the course of four quarters, what is it that you say that you do here? I right. wish you would have told me you were going to make that reference to Office Space. I would have pulled out the quote from I know. the Bobs. Sorry, that just it just floated we'll out get of the it ether. Next time. I'm sure we'll I got the wording time. wrong. But uh, very strong win for Michigan. First time they win in Kinnick since 05, I think, was the the stat. Obviously, they don't play every season as their, their cross division. But um, Blake Corum, heartbeat of this offense, really good. Like, like the offensive line a lot. Like the defensive front a good deal. And J.J. McCarthy once again. Uh, only compliments because that could have easily been a game in which Michigan scored 20 points and lost 23 to 20 on a pick six in a short field kind of thing. Now, very, very good win for them on yeah. the road.